About a year ago, I posted a video talking about how I cured my silent reflux, and it resulted in a lot of questions and a couple comments like, this was so deflating. I thought there was one thing you did. You did everything and have no idea what actually did help. Or, so in other words, there is no one thing that helped. This is the same information you can get other places. So this video is an update to clarify why there wasn't just one magic pill and why that type of thinking may be the reason you're still struggling with reflux. I'll also share some more specifics in response to the comments and questions, including the most common question that I get at the end. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified every time I post a new video about gut health and reflux solutions. For those who haven't seen the video I'm referencing, here's a little background. In my late 20s, I started having all these weird symptoms, sore throat, constant throat clearing, feeling like there was a lump in my throat, dry cough at night, not even being able to speak because it hurt so much, ear pain, and I was told that I was too young and healthy to have reflux, but after some persistence and pushing for tests, I was told, oh, you actually do have reflux and the only thing you can do about it is take acid-reducing medications. I didn't really like that answer. So I tried every natural remedy and approach I could find with varying and often temporary success. And then already a nurse, I decided to become certified as a nutritional therapy practitioner and I started putting together all of the missing pieces. So here are the main things I mentioned doing in my previous video. I stopped following restrictive diets and focused on nourishing foods and balancing blood sugar. I incorporated healing foods for GI inflammation, improved digestion, balanced the microbiome, and addressed nervous system function. Okay, so I get that this can sound like a lot, but the reason I did all of this and suggest similar plans to those in my program is not because I don't know what actually worked, it's because the entire GI tract doesn't function independently of the rest of our body, and all of these things are important. There's usually a combination of imbalances or poor functioning that results in problems like LPR. Because of that, there's not one magic pill or one single lifestyle change that will fix the problem for everyone. Now, maybe for you, focusing on just one or two of these areas is all you need to do, which is great. That's why I mention all of the things that I did. Maybe your diet's great, but your microbiome is all out of whack. Or maybe your stress and anxiety are through the roof, affecting digestion by way of nervous system dysfunction. Rather than being discouraging, this is actually a great thing because it means you don't have to try every random remedy that worked for someone else until you find the one magic thing that fixes your reflux. You just need to take some deep breaths and support these foundations of health. Okay, let's go through some more specifics for each step and the questions they brought up. First up is diet. Some people may be able to get rid of reflux through diet alone, especially if you eat a diet full of processed foods, inflammatory seed oils, or high sugar foods, but a lot of people do eat a healthy diet and still have reflux. I commonly get questions or comments about a specific diet helping a little bit, but not quite enough, like this. I've tried a carnivore diet for three weeks, possibly a little improvement, but it's really hard to assess with silent reflux. Been on the acid watcher diet for the past few months. The diet helped with the congestion, but I still have the throat clearing. In these cases, there's clearly more to it than just food. And this is where all the other points come in. Restrictive eating plans may temporarily decrease some GI symptoms, but actually helping our bodies to do a better job of processing all different foods will have more impact in the long run. And honestly, it just makes life easier and more enjoyable. You also wanna make sure you're not ignoring the needs of the rest of your body. Like, are you actually getting enough vitamins, minerals, protein, nourishing fats, different types of fibers for good hormone health, brain function, liver function, energy? When I severely limited my diet, I ended up feeling worse than ever because I wasn't supporting the needs of the rest of my body. Food fuels our whole body, not just the GI tract. Another question that comes up often from clients in my program about diet is how their trigger foods seem to always be changing. For example, this question, sometimes I can eat apples and feel fine, other times I feel a lump in my throat after I eat apples. We tend to get really caught up in looking for immediate cause and effect or trying desperately to link our symptoms with one specific food, but the thing is, it's not the fault of the apple, in this case. Something's interfering with your ability to digest the apple properly, and that is what we need to address. 
That said, if a particular diet is working for you, you like eating that way, and you get all the nutrients you need, that's great. All right, next up is healing foods for GI inflammation. So healing foods like aloe vera juice and slippery elm don't actually stop reflux from happening, really, but they're important for helping with the painful inflammation that comes along with reflux. So I mentioned this step specifically because plans that call for taking apple cider vinegar or betaine HCL without addressing GI inflammation could actually cause more harm and pain. These are fairly popular supplements for dealing with reflux and some people really do have good success with them. But if you have a sore throat, I would be cautious drinking apple cider vinegar because it could irritate those inflamed tissues even more. And the same goes for taking betaine HCL if you have gastritis or ulcers. I have seen both of these options be helpful, but you really don't wanna ignore inflammation and damage to the GI lining if you're gonna supplement regularly with acid or vinegar. Improving digestion. So this really encompasses so many things, from eating slowly, chewing food well, to adequate stomach acid levels, to supporting the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. It also includes correcting vitamin and mineral deficiencies that affect GI function. Um, some to look into would be zinc, iron, potassium, magnesium, um, and B and D vitamins. While I totally understand wanting a quick solution, a single supplement or medication or food that will fix everything, taking time to improve and then consistently support good digestion makes a bigger impact and will pay off. I'll put the link to my free quick start guide for digestion and reflux in the description below, and that gives more information about all of these topics related to digestion. Balanced microbiome. So another common problem among sufferers of LPR is dysbiosis or bacterial imbalances and overgrowths, whether that's SIBO, H. pylori, candida, any other imbalances that can show up on stool testing. And this dysbiosis can be caused by things like stress, diet, inflammation, antibiotic use, or sometimes even contaminated food and water. So in addition to specific probiotics based on your signs and symptoms or what showed up in your test, in some cases, natural antimicrobials, addressing the issues that led to the dysbiosis in the first place will result in more long-term health and more relief. When it comes to overgrowths like SIBO, it's common to focus on starving and killing the bacteria while ignoring the underlying causes like stress, inflammation, or slow GI motility. Nervous system function. So in the previous video, I mentioned some simple and often overlooked ways to support good nervous system function. Things like good sleep, sunlight before screens in the morning, vitamin B, healthy fats, but nervous system function also includes paying attention to the state you're in when you're eating. Are you relaxed and calm or are you rushed and distracted? Food won't break down well or move in the right direction, which we want it to go downward, not upward, if we're constantly eating while rushed, distracted, stressed. And I know this might sound too simple to actually work, but it really does have a huge impact on our digestion. Chronic stress and anxiety also fall under the umbrella of nervous system function and can play a big part in reflux. If you feel like you're doing everything right, but you're stuck in a state of high stress or chronic anxiety, this could be the missing piece. Digestive and immune processes are suppressed during fight or flight mode, so learning real relaxation is important. There was a study in 2018 that showed people with anxiety were more likely to experience reflux, and they suggested this could be related to uh, muscle tension around the stomach and then also reduced pressure on the lower esophageal sphincter. Okay, now for the most common question I get, which is how long did it take to start feeling better? You may already be anticipating this answer, but it's different for everyone. So in my case, I dealt with this problem on and off for years before figuring out what to do. But once I incorporated all of the things I just talked about, I started feeling significantly better within a couple weeks. And then it was just a matter of being patient and staying consistent. So initially, symptoms like sore throat and feeling that lump in the throat would pop up again maybe every few months, but I could get rid of them much more quickly. After a while, I kind of forgot about reflux because I hadn't thought about it in so long, hadn't felt it in so long, and many of the clients in my program eliminate the majority of their symptoms within a couple months, and then it comes down to fine-tuning and consistency. There's no specific timeline, and it all depends on how well you're supporting all of these different foundations of health. 
If this type of approach makes sense to you, but you feel like you need some more guidance or specific steps to take, check out the link below for the Reflux Relief Academy.